So it's like SOP, so it's like the scripture, observation, application, and prayer. Why is this important? Because, let me show you this. Um, in John 17, uh, 20, uh, Jesus, uh, during this process, like Jesus teaches how to pray, right? Like, oh, this is how you pray. Uh, but then later on, he says, he prays. And he does not teach us how to pray, but instead he says this, my prayer, it's not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Right? So Jesus is actually giving you authority to share. He's actually saying many people are going to believe, maybe not on the cross, maybe not on what I did, and all these things, and all the Gospels. But now I'm going to pray that also they're going to believe through what you have to share. Why? Because we are ambassadors of heaven. Right? Amen. So I do believe you have something to share this morning. Knowledge is power. And but one thing about it is that when you keep the knowledge, it becomes religion. And religion hurts. It's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt your family. So who, who wants to be the first one? Nope. Sub Sunday. Anyone? <laughs> if not, I'm going to end up preaching, and you're not going to like that. <laughs> we love you preaching. Oh, amen. Good. <laughs> yes. Feel the love. Amen. Oh, I was going to share, I was originally going to share something I did a while back. The Lord said, as I was praying, um, Friday, the Lord said, no, I want to give you some fresh bread. That, that was a little stale. That was for a time before, but I want something fresh for my people, for you and for my people. And the, the soap um, started on Friday after a week of just really struggling. I don't do any of you ever have a week where you just really struggle in your heart? It's like there, there's this constant tension. And um, I was just blowing it in, in some thoughts and in my emotions. And I was overreacting to some stuff and just feeling... Uh, like the devil was taking me down to the mat, taking me down on the mat. And so I cried out to the Lord, and I said, God, I'm feeling hopeless right now. I usually don't feel that way. I'm usually pretty optimistic. But I had a, a short season this week where I was just kind of feeling hopeless. Anybody ever felt that way? <laughs> And it was totally because I took my eyes off Jesus and I put him on the problem. So once I got my eyes back on Jesus, the Holy Spirit began to minister his truth to me. And it was like, it was like the Lord took me by the hand and, and he brought me over to a, a guy a neighbor who happens to be a Mormon, but that doesn't matter because God can use anybody. In the Bible, God used donkeys, right? <laughs> so, so God says, just come over and stand, stand by your neighbor who's working on something. And so we start to visit. And I ask him what he's doing and how his week's going. And the Holy Spirit says, just, just keep listening. After a few minutes, he says something that completely changed the way I was thinking. It was so simple, but it was a spoken word. And so, as I share, let me put it this way, I guess, um, the Holy Spirit is always speaking to his people. Jesus promised 
the, can you hear me? Okay. The Holy Spirit promised that he would always speak to his people. Jesus promised that his sheep would hear his voice. Is that true? Yes. And he said, my sheep hear my voice. And what do they do? You know, we're supposed to follow. Sometimes we're bad sheep and we don't follow, but everybody in here is good sheep. So we just believe you. We pray, good sheep, good sheep. So anyway, by simple acts of obedience, we advance the kingdom of God. It's not mysterious. It's not, it's supernatural, but it's not mysterious. It's pretty simple. It's just walking one step at a time. So after my neighbor gave me just a little short, simple statement, God said, that's the power of the word. The spoken word, and Pastor Dave's been preaching on this. Jose's been speaking about it. Our leaders have been speaking about it. The spoken word is what God created to make everything. God used to create everything, the whole universe. And today, God wants to use your spoken word and my spoken word to bring a creative movement of God from heaven to earth. He really does. And if you're like me, if you're sitting in the chair, and you're thinking, well, that might apply to you, but I don't think that applies to me. Because <laughs> I've been there, and, and that's kind of normal. But the Holy Spirit, he is saying to you, inside of you, you have words of life. We also have words of death, but we can choose to speak life. We can choose to... We can decide to choose life. So, after a week of struggle on Friday night, this is what the Holy Spirit gave to me. It's from Psalm 16, starting at verse 8. I have set the Lord, excuse me. No, that was the one I was going to share. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Because I love that verse. Okay, I'm sorry, I lost my place. Now I'm in the right spot. And what the Lord spoke to me on Friday, I'm glad I dated that. Can you go up one more minute so that we can Okay, that's right. Acts 15, 19, the Apostle James declared, it is my judgment, therefore, I thought you wanted to preach. Oh. <laughs> be good too. <laughs> the preceding discussion about the Gentiles, he said it, that we as a body of believers should make it difficult for people to come to God. Amen. So my observation is that Jesus gave his body, gave his blood, that we remember today. Amen. We receive it by faith. What the Lord's been stirring me regarding James's words is this, that the saints in America and really throughout the earth have often made it difficult for people to enter the kingdom of God. They're tripping over us. When God does begin his, well, actually he's begun a great awakening throughout the earth. He wants to restore simple, pure childlike faith to his body. Like Pastor Rosie was talking about, just simple, pure love for God, love for people. My application is this, I really need to take to heart the words of Jesus. In Revelation 2, 2, I know your deeds, your hard work, your perseverance, he's talking in the church. Come on. <clears throat> He says, you've done these good things and you haven't grown weary, yet I have this against you. You have left your first love. You've forsaken your first love. 
Remember the height to which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. Do the things you did at first. I think that he wants my heart to change. Grow toward him daily with the first love kind of passion. There are three words, three important words that God wants us to remember. Surrender, surrender, and surrender. <laughs> Four. Three important words. My prayer is, Lord Jesus, please help us to give you all of me, like Pastor Jose referred to, all of me. Holy Spirit, thank you for coming. May you break all the walls in my life down so that your kingdom can flow through me to your world. May your will be done in your, your kingdom come and your will be done in my heart, in our homes, on earth as it is in heaven this very moment. Amen. Amen. That's a good word. Yes. Who would like to be next? So let me let me share a story with you as you as you, no, you can come. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah ca come on. Yeah, that's good. Just trying to share stories so that the time goes by. No, 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 it's good. Hallelujah. As many of you know, we're missionaries to Tanzania, and someone sent us a scripture this year, this week, and it was Deuteronomy chapter one, verse ten. And he says, for the Lord has multiplied you to become as many as the stars. And that really blessed us. But the Lord gave Kathy a different word. And she told me, she says, well, I misread that scripture that this person sent us. And she said, it's Deuteronomy 11.10. Well, so we read that one. And it says, for the Lord... For the land you are about to enter and possess is not like the land of Egypt, where you have come from, where irrigation is necessary. Okay, we're thinking of Tanzania, okay? It is a land of hills and valleys with plenty of rain, a land the, the Lord, your God, personally cares for. His eyes are always upon it day after day throughout your the year and if you carefully obey all his commandments that I am going to give you today and if you will love the Lord your God with all your hearts and souls and will worship him then he will continue to send both the early and latter rains that will produce wonderful crops of grains grapes for your wine and olive oil this last two years, we have gone through a drought in Tanzania where we've had nothing, no rain. Up until a few weeks ago, we had two weeks of rain, and then it flooded, and of course, then it dries up within a day, and it's dust again. And this scripture really spoke to us, that even though we misread what the person sent to us, God spoke to us and said, I will produce from your land. And so that is our prayer. Uh, it's supposed to be soap. Scripture, I read the scripture. <laughs> Observation is that God's speaking to us, telling us that he still has his eyes on our land. Uh, so, a a application. We need to pray. I have a lot of time. Oh. <laughs> application is that we need to continue to pray for our land. And I'm asking that you would join us in that prayer that God will produce what he says he will do. Uh, a few weeks ago, I told you that our king had become saved. And we really believe that when the king of our region becomes saved, that this will totally change the, the uh, atmosphere of our land. Because there has been human sacrifices made on the mountain right next to us that, by the way, we have taken Witch Mountain over and it's now Prayer Mountain. And so the witches aren't even coming to our area anymore. And so we believe that if we continue to pray and continue to do what God tells us to do, he will multiply the crops on the grass, on our land. Uh, and we believe that 
since the king has became saved that that's going to change the entire atmosphere over our land. And so we are believing that the grass will come. Last year we lost, many of our people lost their cows and their sheep due to drought. Well, they have dug small wells that they can produce water, but the ground around us is not producing grass for the cattle to, grow, uh, to eat and the sheep to eat, so they're dying. They're dying of starvation. But this scripture so spoke to us that if we continue to pray for the people and for our land, that God will heal our land and it will produce the way it's supposed to do. He will bring the rains in the right seasons. And two years ago, we were in a drought and I told Dominic, I said, and there was clouds all around us. I said, Dominic, if it rains here, I'm going to take my shirt off and I'm going to run outside and stand in the rain. He said, you do that, you're going to get sick, Buana. Well, Buana means sir. And, uh, but it started sprinkling, and sure enough, I took my shirt off and ran out in the rain. And I was so thankful for that little bit of rain. And so we are so thankful that God has spoken this word to us, that he is faithful. He will do what he says he will do. And so my prayer is, Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you for your word that you said that you will prosper us. You will prosper our people in our land. And that you will produce the rains that need to come for the crops. And for our people that they will understand that it's you giving this and not us. And we'll give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. That's, that's really powerful. Actually, I... Um, I wanted to talk about that today, and it's just like God is just kind of using that. Uh, also, I was in Jeremiah 29, verse 7. It says, Also seek the peace and the prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into the exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you will also prosper along with it. You know? And sometimes I see, like, if you live here in Walla Walla and you don't have a heart for this town, poverty is going to go after you. And for you as a Christian, you're going to go like, I love God, I worship God, I pursue God, but, man, it does not work. This town is like, it's just not for me. And the reason why is because you don't have a heart for this town. And that's what God says in Jeremiah. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city which I have place you on so that if it prospers you will also prosper so I just want to release that word over you that if you right now are struggling financially or maybe you plant some vegetables and they're not just not making it <laughs> maybe you need to research your heart and tell God search my heart oh Lord make me fall in love with this town why because if if for me as a, as a husband, which I'm not married yet, but if I love my home, I love my house, I love the things that I do, my wife, when she's going to come home, she's just going to go like, there's something going on in here, right? So if there's things going on in your home, man, like, come on, like, fall in love with your land. Who wants to be next? Right there. Oh, boy. <laughs> we praise you, God. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Praise God. How many of you came expecting to receive something from God today? Amen. Amen. Sound like a silly question to ask a bunch of people in church, but I know I went through hundreds of church services, and all I was expecting was to sing the same song and hear stuff I already heard before, right? But no, I came with an expectation. That's what that real Bible hope is. That true, heartfelt expectation to receive something good from God. Amen. 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 I'm going to read into you a portion of Scripture. Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. And this last part of the verse, and I guarantee you that if you've been in churches for a while, you've heard it. Or if you've witnessed the people on the streets, you've heard them say it just like you've heard preachers say it. But everybody wants to put their own little slant on it. The last part of that verse, he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You'll hear some people in the religious realm 
try to put a twist on it to where they make you think that you have to earn something special from God. That's not what he's saying. But then whenever you're talking to people who don't care about the things of God, don't want to be a part of the things of God, don't care about the scriptures, they'll use it to make you shut up. Oh, you know, brother, I'm just working out my own salvation now. Leave me alone. And what they mean is the Frank Sinatra way. They're doing it their way is what they're telling you. They don't mean what he's saying in this scripture. You have to keep it in context. This was a letter to the church explaining to you how to live out this victorious Christian life. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But there's not really a break there. There's not really a chapter and verse there. We added that to help us reference verses. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for this reason. Or we would say, because... For it is God which worketh in you two things, both to will and to do his good pleasure. When it, the first time I read that verse in the Greek and I realized that he says that that word will means desire. It's God who gives you the desire to do things that pleases God. It's God, the next verse, that where he says to do is translated in other places as the ability. He gives you first the desire, then he gives you the ability to do what pleases him. Whenever you receive Jesus Christ into your heart, you inherently know that all things are possible to you through Christ. Even though you may have not read that verse yet, you know it. And you have this passion inside of you until somebody tries to take it out. Until religion gets you to not stand in that word, you have that desire. You inherently know, wait a minute, Christ in me is the hope of glory. How do you know that? You know that because of the witness of the Holy Spirit, the one that drew you to the Father. The same Holy Spirit that was there whenever you received him and you were born again, that empowerment. When you've been walking through a store and the, the passion of God inside of you said you need to pray for that person. Where did that come from? That's the desire of the father to see the works of Satan destroyed in their life. But you see, and a lot of people understand that, but they don't get the next part. That he's also given you the ability to do what pleases God. That doesn't mean just act nice and talk nice and say you love everybody. You should do that anyway. He's speaking of the things that the world cannot do. I don't need an ability from God to do something that the other people can do, that the other religions can do. I need an ability to God to do the works of Christ in this earth. And I need that ability of God. But you see, in this portion, as Paul explains, I want to read the whole verse before I go. He says, for it is God which worketh in you two things, both to will and to do his good pleasure. To do what pleases God. Paul, I'm not going to take very long on this, but Paul explains this same thing again. He explains it in the letter to Philemon. When he's pointing this out to the church, to you, to me, whenever he says regarding his introduction, and he talks about how he's writing this to him, to the church in his house, and then he says, I thank God for you. And the way he says this, in verse 4, I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers, because this is what I've heard. Hearing of your love and faith, which you have towards the Lord Jesus Christ and towards all the saints. And then he says, now you need to take that passion and that power that was placed inside of you at that new birth, and it needs to be expressed into the world. The same thing he was speaking of. In the book of Philippians. Here in this portion he says it this way. That the communication of your faith. The word communication means to transfer from one place to the other. I can have telecommunications. I can have verbal communications. I can have written communications. But either way, what am I doing? I'm taking this information and I'm getting it from one spot to another spot. Right now he says this faith is inside of you. But it has to be brought to another place. Look at the way he says this. 
that the communication or the bringing over, or the bringing out of your faith may become effectual. Now, we would say effective. If I'm doing something and it's not having the resort that I think it should have, I'll look and say, that's not being effective. Why is it that I can sit back and watch Satan steal, kill, and destroy everything that I hold dear? Why is it that so many people can do that and not think anything's wrong? Because religion has given them an excuse. Oh, you just need to pray harder. You just need to cry more when you pray. You just need to stand this way. You just need to do this. It's probably because you didn't do this good thing I told you to do that time, remember? And they'll go through all of these semantics because they don't have the answer because the answer is only found in Christ. So whenever we look at it and I have to constantly examine myself, you have to constantly examine yourself and say, am I being more like Jesus Christ today than I was yesterday? Am I applying this word to my life in an effectual, in an effective way? Am I taking the word of God like a tool and applying it to the broken parts of my life, getting everything situated and then lifting up my eyes because the fields are wide in the harvest and he doesn't tell me to sit back and beg him to go and save those people he says I need laborers the laborers are few those who will take the initiative and understand that it's God that works in me both to will and to do his good pleasure what's his good pleasure God is not willing that any would perish Jesus Christ said that he came to destroy the works of the devil and then I'll tell you well you know Jesus lives inside of my heart but I don't want to destroy the works of the devil that's a liar if Jesus Christ is inside of you, then that same passion, that same light, and that same love is inside of you. But as Paul is pointing out in this portion, you have to understand how to communicate that, how to bring that across to where it can be effective. You're not sitting back and pleading with God to do what he's already done. He said, no, you in my name cast out devils. You lay hands on the sick and they shall shall recover oh yes well I believe that in theory no you don't. you either believe it or you don't believe it you either stop and say God help me to take any religious ideas I have out of the way help me to remove myself out of the way so that I can get the same mindset that Paul had to where I can say it's not even me living anymore Oh no, it's Christ inside of me. I've been crucified with Christ and it's no longer I who live. But it's now Christ living in me and through me. And then all of those verses that look good on the t-shirts will look good in your life. All of those verses that look so good on the back of a bumper sticker. They'll be the story of your life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. You begin to live out the word of God instead of just having a mental descent to the things that you know are of God. In this portion, whenever he points out that faith has to be brought across to the world around you, it has to be effectively communicated. And he says, this is what you need to do. He says, you need to begin to acknowledge what's been placed inside of you. Let me read the way he says it in the scripture. That the communication of your faith may become effectual by this route. By the acknowledging of every good thing which is in, in you in Christ Jesus. You have to stop and begin to realize who does this Bible say I am in Christ? Who does it say I am in Christ? What does it say my mission is in this world? Am I being about my father's business? Or am I letting the cares of this world and the pride of life and the lust for other things dry me up to where I don't even have that passion anymore? Am I allowing the seed of God, the word of God that's been planted in my heart to be choked by the cares of this world and the lust of other things. You see, once you begin to acknowledge, wait a minute, that something's horribly wrong. Something's horribly wrong whenever I walk into the situation and I don't stand up and declare the kingdom of God is nigh you. When I walk into a situation and I do anything other than what Jesus Christ 
would do in that situation, then I'm backpedaling. But you have to realize when Christ is in you, you have to realize when Christ is in you that you don't have to back up from anybody, that you don't have to stand down from any situation. You're in a fallen world that's in rebellion against God, but Jesus Christ has come. He has died. He has risen again. He has ascended to the right hand of the Father, and he sent the same spirit that he was working in and through in this world to live where? In you. To live in you. Whenever Paul pointed that out, that Christ in you is the hope of glory. If I shun that, that, that verse where he points out that if we neglect so great a salvation as this, if we neglect that, the word neglect doesn't mean I'm in rebellion against. It doesn't mean I'm attacking or opposed to. It means that I'm simply not paying attention to it. I'm just simply not giving it the attention that it's due. In this portion where he points out that us acknowledging what's been placed in us in Christ, that's where I want my prayer to go. I want to ask you as we begin to pray that, that you would first off do a self-examination. The way Peter pointed out that we examine ourselves. If you'd first off do a self-examination, say, God, what do I really believe about this? Is there anything in me that is hindering me from walking out this Christ-like life. And if there is, Lord, I turn from that. That's what the word repentance means. I turn from my way of seeing it. I turn from religion's way of seeing it. And I turn to your way. I will become one who is biblically humble. That means I won't rely on my opinion. I won't rely on the opinion of the world. I won't even rely on my past experiences. I will rely on your opinion, your word, your will, and your way. And anything in my life that is opposed to your word, your will, and your way, that's a lie. And I submit myself under the hand of the Almighty, understanding and knowing that he'll exalt me in due time. Now I want to ask you to pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we receive it, Father. We receive it. But Father, if there be anything inside of us that is hindering us from walking in your word, in your will, in your way, Father, we turn from that. Father, we seek greater understanding from you regarding who we are in your son Jesus Christ regarding what our mission is in this world we desire that father we're here as your laborers and father we receive your direction we will only hear your voice and we will obey father we thank you and we praise you for this privilege position that we have as we are seated in heavenly places in your son Jesus Christ we thank you for it father and we will not neglect it in Jesus name amen how many of you received something from God amen, amen. Thank you, that was powerful <laughs> yeah. I love the diversity in the church I believe diversity is power you see when you see Jesus and his 12, you see the one he loved right next to him, like really adorable, right? Like Jesus, like, man, the one I love is right next to me. And then you see Paul, like, uh, kind of tough, right? Taking his sword off, trying to kill people. Saying, no, Jesus, you're not going to die. And Jesus is like, get behind me, Satan. Like this diversity that Jesus cared is in the church today. And we as a body, we have to appreciate it. We have to appreciate the ones that... Like Robbie, like, man, such a passionate, I, I want to be born again, right? Just like, man. Amen. And then there's their other ones that they like, wow, it's just, just like brings tears to my eyes. And that's, that's fine. The diversity is power. You don't go like, my message is not like that, I'm not going to go. No, there's something unique in every single one of us. God is creative. So who likes to be next? Yeah, one over here. Man. How do you top that? <laughs> Brother's got to preach. Um, 
I'm uh, looking at Matthew 18, starting with verse 18. Um, a lot of you know that I've been a, an intercessor for a long time now, but guess what? So are you. Intercessors, anybody that comes before the Father on behalf of somebody else. So our life, we're all supposed to be prayers. Prayer is holding a conversation with the Father who loves us. Intercessor is stand in the gap between a person that you love and come before Father and say, Lord, I want you to do this on behalf of that person. So uh, Matthew 18, starting with verse 18, I'm reading out of, uh, I think it's called the Living Version, which has a kind of a Jewish flavor to it. Sometimes we don't get the Jewish uh, cultural references here, but this is kind of cool. It says, Amen. Ha <laughs> ha. I tell you, whatever you forbid on earth will have been forbidden in heaven, and what you permit on earth will have been permitted in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. So guess where Jesus is right now? <laughs> is there two in here? Oh, yeah. So wherever you and I agree, we see some things not happen. And I think part of the problem is that the church needs to get in agreement with heaven. And then the church needs to say it together. So if I agree in heaven that certain things are not permitted, and then Nelda agrees with me on the same thing, saying the same thing, guess what Father is going to do? And I was thinking about uh, ambassadors and embassies. The Holy Spirit, in the scripture says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit when we're born again. Holy Spirit takes up residence. So therefore we're a castle, therefore we're a temple, therefore we're an embassy. And if you know anything about embassies and ambassadors, an embassy and an ambassador represents the home country in a different land. So the church is an embassy. If you are born again, you are an embassy and you are an ambassador. An ambassador will only say what the home kingdom says, what the king or the leader of the home country or the governing body says. You don't say anything of your own opinion. So if it's in scripture, if it's what the Holy Spirit says, and we come in agreement with that, and we say to him, Papa, I see these kids over here being tormented, and that's not your will. That's not your will. I agree with heaven for intervention on their behalf, and I ask you to rescue them. That's Jesus' will. I'm saying, as an, ambas an ambassador in this realm, whatever the kingdom's saying, and he comes in agreement with me, and then he goes and rescues that person. Some of you know I've been dealing with cancer. I had uh, my, kit, my right kidney out. It was in 2014 for a cancer issue, and it moved to my lungs. There's five little spots in my lungs that we've been dealing with of them on an oral chemo. If you are an embassy and an enemy attacks the embassy, embassy that is an attack on the home country. Okay, so if disease attacks you, how many people had issues with disease and illness? If disease attacks you, that's an attack on the home country. What's the home country? Heaven. Ah, uh -uh, he's not having that. So it is illegal for that to happen in your life. It is illegal for me to be ill. I'm not a. I'm not a ill person. I'm an. I'm a well person that's fighting for my healing. So it's illegal for cancer to be in my body. I agree with heaven. So that thing's got to go. Okay. So i What I'm. What I'm inspiring you to do is not put up with a lot of stuff that we've been putting up with. If you see it in scripture, it belongs to you. If it's ever happened to another Christian that you got healed, you got saved, something happened that you got a financial blessing, it's also yours. So take it. Come in agreement with a, another brother and sister. Lord, I need this amount of money. My son needs this amount of money for, for tuition. Come in another agreement with another brother or sister. Come in agreement with heaven. And guess what Father's going to do? <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you that when we're born again, your spirit takes up residence in us. I thank you. You're a good, good Father, and every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. Healing comes, provision comes, 
peace comes, love comes, joy comes, righteousness comes, and it's not because we stir it up, it's because you give it to us. Everything good and perfect comes from you. And so I bless my brothers and sisters, and I just bless my life, and I come in agreement with heaven for righteousness, peace, and joy, and every good thing from the Father God, God above, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a good word. The Bible says, a divided house will not prosper against himself, right? And if you have a family, you know that even if you believe, like you have a rule, but if nobody follows it, it really, it's wordless. Everybody has to become like an agreement. So what I'm saying is this, that you do have to receive the gift of being a son and being an ambassador of heaven. It will not happen. It will not work if you don't believe it. It's by faith. We have James King over there. I think he's ready to come. Thank you. Did you continue? Okay, okay, good, good. He's coming. So, uh, yeah, I think this is working. Uh, and then after that, I think who, who else would like to come? Just kind of go through the list and see. <laughs> uh, the verse that I have, if my phone will cooperate. Uh, it's uh, Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Uh, for me, as a new Christian long ago, uh, this is a little bit of uh, connecting with what Dave was talking about. It is that I understood I was to go into the prison and ministry. So as a Christian of nine months, I started in the penitentiary here, and so I still am in and out of there. And they let me go home at night, and it's good. Uh, but it's that right around that time I was led to understand that I was to become a missionary. And that took 25 years before I finally wound up in Peru to live uh, back in 2010. So it was a timing issue in understanding what he was giving me. Uh, so when God speaks to you or through other people to you, sometimes it doesn't make much sense to you. You wind up then in faith having to talk to God about it so that he leads you through the processes to prepare you for it. I don't get up on the platform anymore because if, when I share, I can't trust my legs. I leg press 290, but I, I can't trust my legs when I come down. I, but anyway, it was that just before we left for Peru back in 2010, Hugh Laybourne was here from Lewiston along with a friend from his, or a brother from one of his congregations, and they said that I would speak before kings. Okay, well, I've often had God speak to me where I didn't know what he was talking about, and I've often had other people speak words to me that I didn't understand yet either. And so you step out in faith, and you wind up doing those things that you understand he would have you do. So I just got back from about, about six weeks, and most of it in Michigan, about five weeks of it or so. I, and my last name is King. So to appear before kings, I have not been to a family reunion in 40 years. We live at the other end of the country, so it's kind of awkward to attempt to do that. Uh, and so I wound up there being a witness in the family that, actually my mother's family also, the Osbournes, but it was it sharing a witness of what God has done in me and through me. Uh, so that they would come to understand this verse, which winds up being a lot like Mark 16, 15. Uh, an understanding that, let me find it again, it moved. <laughs> I know this travel of using a phone. <laughs> yeah, it shifts around. And this gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom is the only gospel Jesus preached. He taught about the kingdom consistently, and where the kingdom is present, people are healed, delivered, and raised from the dead. And once you understand the power of his gospel, which is more than just a gospel of salvation, that's just the beginning. It's essential. If you don't come into the kingdom, you can't work there. You can't be empowered to fulfill the callings on your life there. So for me, it is that there may be confusion if God is speaking to you. If you're in Christ, he is. You may not always know what he's talking about, but you step out in faith in order to be able to, for the kingdom to manifest through you in the lives of others. I, wow, I wish sometimes that I understood things right away, but I'm a bit slow, is the impression I got. Uh, it wasn't until I was in Peru in 2010 that the Lord said, you will study the gospel of the kingdom. So I used my Thompson chain reference and came up with 110 passages from the Old and New Testament and wound up coming to understand what that meant. It was something that I practiced without understanding that it was his gospel. Wow. 
That's a powerful thing. So when it's preached throughout the world that the power of the kingdom will manifest in all of those where he is present, then that means you too. And you have a calling, and you are going to be empowered or gifted to be able to accomplish that calling on your life. Every one of you here, and though I have hundreds of friends in Asia and Africa that I'm in ministry to through Facebook message mode mainly, uh, it is that still, it winds up being that if he doesn't manifest here where I live, then there's something missing in me and the kingdom and that relationship. When I wind up thinking worldwide, and my focus is there, but I miss where I am, where the Holy Spirit can give me eyes to see and ears to hear, so that I might let the kingdom manifest in the lives of the people that are in front of me. Wow, it's meant to happen wherever we are. And as we pray and are led by the Spirit, we'll discover more and more that that's true. And he will do more and more for you to share a witness about. So let's pray, please. Father in heaven, fill us with your Holy Spirit mightily. Wow. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear like never before as you witness, share a witness of the kingdom through us. Give us those experiences in our lives so that we might be able to, to share them where you lead us through the prayers that we, uh, that we share, where you lead us through the, the thing, messages that we speak, where people are healed, delivered, and raised from the dead as a result of your work through us. And let this valley be transformed as a result of the knowledge of it. I thank you for the movements throughout the, the world, where even if, if it's a gospel of salvation, that you move powerfully so that the gospel of the kingdom manifests. So people are healed, delivered, and raised from the dead in Africa and Asia and in the U.S. And, and across the planet. So, Father in heaven, bless us all with a new knowledge of who you are and who we are in you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. The gospel is nothing else but good news. You know, it's just good news. I have good news. Salvation is good news. Salvation is mercy. And Jesus said in John 13, 34, he says, A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. That's what the gospel represents to me. When you, when you want to go to the nations, or wherever you want to go, to your neighbor, but you don't have love, it's meaningless. The gospel is good news, and the good news is love. Amen. And Jesus said, that's, that's, that's what I command you, a new one I give you. Love the way I teach you how to love. He's like, I'm going to wash your feet. And Paul's like, no, you, you're not. And then he's like, if I don't wash your feet, you're not, not coming to heaven. He's like, do my hands too. <laughs> He said that, right? It's like, forget about it, you know? And Jesus is like, now you get it. Like, come on, like, now you get it. Like, I'm a king, and I come to serve. That's what the gospel is. We're not here when we talk about the gospel. We're actually here. It's kind of funny, right? That if I put it this way, I feel like that's how you're going to get it. I have to go here. When I see sin right here, I have to go here. Why? Because I allow Jesus to take over. But if I see here and then I, I want to go here because just like you're a sinner and I, I'm here, it's not going to work. It's, it's funny because it's like, man, you're a sinner, but I have to go low and I can serve you and I can love you. That's what the king, a kingdom mentality, a kingdom heart does. Who likes to go next? Your dad, Samantha? <laughs> Samantha's like, dad, you go. That's good. Okay. Um, we're doing good in time. I'm gonna I'm gonna share a small testimony. Uh, then after that, I would like to have the worship and maybe the prayer team and just kind of kind of worship again. We're gonna have the prayer team. Uh, we believe in healing and prophetic words. If you wanna hear from God, come talk to one of our leaders. If you wanna if you have sickness in your body? Come talk to us. Uh, back in Oklahoma, when uh, when I first started doing this, like I went, when I wanted, like oh, I want, I want to be a pastor, a, a youth pastor, and um, I remember there were like open mics, right? And everybody will sign up like for singing, rapping, spoken word, and I will sign up like to preach, right? 
So I was like the, not the good guy because everybody was like, yeah. And, and I was signed up to actually talk. And it was kind of funny, right? Okay, on top of that, I was like, okay, I know you're having a hard time understanding what I'm saying now. Okay, this is four years ago. So I will sign up to talk. It will definitely, like, it will not make sense to them. They were just like, what is he saying, you know? What kind of art is that? But now I see the guys like moving glory to glory. And all you have to do, I, I said this a few months ago when I first came to Grace. I said, everybody's like, oh, wow, he's so anointed. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about people. Like we see people, right? preachers and uh, any people. And they go like, wow, that's so anointed. I want that fire that they have. I want the fire of God. For me, anointing is nothing more than obedience. Obedience brings grace. Humility brings knowledge, brings wisdom. Yeah. Why? Because even if you know that it's right, you will go low and say, is this right? The gifts of the Spirit. The Spirit, that's what it is. So I will encourage you to go and pursue and be obedient to what God has called you to do. It's going to be funny, but the fruit is going to be so good. It's going to be sweet, right? So, um, worship team, come, come up front and get ready, um, if, if that's fine. <laughs> and Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, okay, yeah. Church, are we ready? We're gonna worship one more time. We're gonna. Uh, for me, uh, worship. It sometimes I'm just sitting there, and I'm just like, I remember when I shared this with the church, and I said, King David just got back from a fight, and he came to his home, and their wife and their kids were gone. David and his men they cry out loud until they didn't have more strength. That was the victory that he had. It wasn't like, yeah, celebration. And that's what worship is sometimes, you know? You bring your heart and you just give God the last. Just like, God, this is all I have, it's just a cry. I don't have words, you know, it's just, it's just my heart. This is how broke I feel. And sometimes it's just like praise, you know? The Bible says, come through the gates with praise and worship. But worship is nothing more but recognizing who is the king and who is your father and you want to talk to your father. So thank you, God. You want? Uh, so obviously what everybody has been saying today is about our heart condition. What's going on in our hearts. Um, so I just feel, I just, those who are hungry and thirsty come. <laughs> And so, Papa, all of the words, all of the things that you've been speaking to us about your truth and your revelation and a heart condition that we have, Lord, that um, what you've been teaching us is that our hearts need to stay raw, our hearts need to stay vulnerable, they need to stay real um, to what you're saying, to what you're speaking to us. So, God, I ask that you would seal upon our hearts this morning all the things that you've been speaking to us Lord and let them resonate let them resonate mind body soul spirit let us let the sound of heaven res resonate within us Lord that the fire that the passion stir within us God that we are world changers you have created us you designed us for all the gifts that you've given us Lord they're here to be spread and to be shared and to be passed out and to ignite <laughs> we're igniters lord so i thank you i thank you for the boldness and the courageousness that you are instilling in our hearts this morning father god we cry out we cry out our yes we give you our yes this morning father god lord holy spirit i declare a stirring and a yearning and an igniting and a passion and a desires and the burning let it burn within us father god we are your children and we see we see the injustices and we can because you told us go so God, we give you our yes, we give you our obedience, Father God. As a church, as the body of Christ, we thank you, God, for your goodness. 
that invades us, Father God. And as we pour out and we share your love, Lord, as we learn about your love, Father God, in deeper measures, Father God, we go, Father God, and we release that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 